What's going on everyone and welcome back to another episode, episode 2 of the Honda S2000 Horrible Paint Job Build. Man, Diaz has really been working on it and we've got a lot detrimmed. We got the bumper out, the tail lights. He went ahead, he got the handles out as well. Today in the episode, it is a big episode because what we're going to be doing is bringing this car into the body shop. So let's go ahead and let's roll it out of here and bring it to the back. Okay, so the horrible paint job S2000 is here. And this, on this episode, what we're gonna concentrate on are the door panels and the quarter panels. You see, we already got our paintless dent removal guy and he came through and he removed some of the dents that were, needed a little bit of work. So now we can just apply a light skim coat of body filler. So we'll talk about the preparation to get to that point. And in future episodes, well, we're gonna paint the rest of this car this trunk has been worked on before, and we're gonna do just a little bit of welding to fill up some poorly filled in holes. So let's get started. All right, so we have the car all here in the body shop, and what we're gonna focus on this episode is, I'm gonna focus on my side, and I'm gonna break it down to you, Diaz is doing the same exact thing, but on his side, okay? So what we're gonna discuss is how to fill minor dents. All the body work has already been done. Remember, we used PDR. There weren't really that many big dents on here. So now all they need is just a little bit of a credit card swipe to make them nice and even. Now, what we have over here is a large area that's gonna need filler because it's got a little bit of a wave to it. Now we're gonna be using a 3M block. It is Hook It, I mean, it's, it's Velcro. I love this block. I will put them in the description. Next up, we're gonna be using Evercoat Optex. And here's what I love about this. It says, can be applied directly over sanded OEM paint. Well, this is OEM paint and we can directly apply it once we scuff it up. Well, what do I mean by scuffing it up? We want at least a 180 grit sand scratch. Now, some of your older fillers, you have to go down to bare metal to create that adhesion. And it also is still a good idea, but if you don't know what you're doing, sometimes you can actually put a dent in. You wanna hold your block as straight as possible. And the reason why we're using a block is it's gonna take down the highs and it's gonna show us where our lows are. So I'm gonna show that to you right here on this panel. So I'm going to follow a cross hatch pattern one way and then the other way. Okay, so we got our whole quarter panel area blocked out where I originally saw there was dents. Now we can tell that these are the low spots which would represent a dent. This is why when we first touch the car, we initially block it and we use the paint as a guide coat to show us where we need to go ahead and fill. Because this block right here is only going to take the top surfaces off and anything that is below it is gonna be revealed here. Now all these are minor, minor, minor dents. They don't need any pulling and they would be the same type of dent you would have after you've worked the metal so that we can go ahead and put a nice skim coat of Bondo on. And like I said before, this is calling for at least a 180 grit. So that's what we've done here. So now we're gonna go ahead and mix it. And we're not just gonna wipe one, two, three areas. We're gonna do the whole entire thing. When we do the whole entire panel, we create consistency. That means it's gonna be sanded all at once and it's gonna be super smooth. Instead of going here, here, and here, sometimes we can put dents in if we don't sand it properly. Okay, so here's the filler. 
And with the hardener, I don't like to add too much. Otherwise, it could just really kick too fast. And if it's not enough, it's just gonna take a little bit longer. It's also important to pick a good spreader, a spreader that matches the size of repair that you're doing. God, they're gonna demonetize me with that music over there. So when we go to put this filler on, we can make sure that we are spreading it with the actual panel itself, okay? So what I'll do is I'll get it on first, and then we wanna do as long swipes as possible. Okay, it's gonna take some time. You're not gonna get it perfect, but you wanna get it as good as you can because that means your sanding's gonna be a little bit easier and it's gonna be straighter when you come to block it. And the last thing I do before it dries is I'll take my finger and go around the whole thing. And what this is gonna do is just helps feather it in a little bit more so you don't have a hard edge when you go to actually sand it. It makes a big difference. Filler is drying and you can see that it is turning color. Now I'm gonna show you something called the green stage sanding. Green stage sanding is when you can knock down those high edges, to make your sanding a little bit easier. Now, when you go to sand, and if it looks like this, that means it is not ready. You need to wait. Now, when you go to sand it a few minutes later, if you see that the dust particles are a little bit more chunky, okay, and not as stringy, then you know it's ready to go. Now, this is just green stage sanding. We're not actually sanding. All I'm trying to do is knock down those ridges from the spreader to make life a little bit easier once it cures. So I'll just follow the same direction, cross, hatch, once I feel like those ridges are somewhat flattened out and my little humps are gone, then I will stop and I'll wait another 15 to 20 minutes until it's ready to sand for real. So our body filler has set up for about 20 minutes. We have 80 grit here. We're not gonna thoroughly sand it with 80 grit. We're just gonna go ahead and shape it just a little bit more and we're gonna do long strokes, okay? Long X patterns, one way and the other way to ensure our body filler is sanded properly. If we were just to do small strokes, okay, that could again cause a um, uneven surface right here. So we do it in the whole entire way, just knocking it down. Now that we have a sanded with 80, we're gonna take a uh, guide coat. I prefer a dry guide coat because I can really get it into all those 80 grit scratches. I need to make sure I've removed them. If I don't, you're gonna see them along the line. We do not prime over 80 grit ever. So now, same thing, we're gonna sand over the whole entire panel, and we're gonna remove all of those 80 grit scratches as best as we can. And we can see where our dents still were, so we need to keep sanding so the black goes away. So we got to sand it with 180. Now let's remove those 180 sand scratches. Let's use our guide coat once again. And we're gonna go ahead and remove them with 220. Now once again, we're gonna take our guide coat. We're gonna rub it into all of our surfaces. This time we're gonna use 320 on a DA with a soft interface pad. This is gonna help with the contours of the body and it's gonna give a softer sand scratch, which is gonna get us ready for primer. We're gonna sand the whole entire quarter panel, even the paint that doesn't need any body work. We're just gonna go ahead and scuff it up. Okay, so what we have here is a surface that is ready for primer. It's all in 320. And you got your body filler only in the areas where there were the slightest of a little bit of a wave. 
and it actually uh, went into some areas where we thought we didn't have any dents. So that's super awesome. Um, so from this point, we're gonna go ahead and move to the door. We're gonna do the same process on here, just a little bit quicker. So we can go ahead and get this door, this quarter panel, and the other side that Diaz is working on all primered up. Now we're gonna focus on the door. Now we're not gonna wipe the whole entire door with body filler. We went ahead and we've circled our little dents. So we're gonna work areas. We wanna make sure though we bridge or repair. That means if we have a dent here and here, and maybe one just a few inches away, we wanna make sure that we're sanding the whole area. If we don't, sometimes, again, that can cause dents. So what we are gonna do here is sand this whole area with 180. All of this area right here, it's not dented. It does not need 180. It really only needs about a 400 grit scuff for the primer overspray. And then as we move along the door, we have a dent over here and here. These two areas are too far apart, so we will not be bridging them. We will be working on them independently. For now, let's start on our bigger area. Once again, with 180, we're gonna sand down the whole thing and repeat the same process as we had on a quarter panel. Okay, so these spots on the door weren't really that bad. The body filler really didn't take, and it looks like we sanded out the dents just by sanding the paint because those dents were so, so shallow. Remember, they were worked on with PDR before. But I wanna show you something that's not quite ready for primer. Now, if we take a look at the panel here, you see those deep gouge scratches right in here? This is not ready for primer. What I see here is 180 grit that has not totally been removed yet and refined. Now take a look over here. You see how you don't see those stray sanding scratches? What would happen is if we were to prime over this, that primer would fall into these scratches and later it would shrink into it and you'd see where all of your sanding was. But not to worry, simple fix. All we gotta do is hit it with 320 and keep feathering out that panel right there and smooth that out. Do you see how smooth the transition is now? Let's take a look at our rings. We have primer, and then we have our base, and then we have our clear. Do you see how they're at least a quarter of an inch feathered out? They're not really on top of each other. This is what you want for a nice transition of your paint. This is also gonna help out with edge mapping. That's that ring around where your body work was. That's mostly because you did not feather out your edge properly and you just hit it with too much primer. You didn't let the solvents come out of the primer before you hit it with the next coat. I think right now we're ready to prime. So let's go ahead and get our masked up and let's get some primer on here. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hit up all our bare metal areas with an etching primer. This is Sickens, they actually call it the wash primer. Uh, so 1K primer, it does not need to be two parts. That's all etch is. And this is just a coating that goes right on top of that metal to protect it from rust or anything like that. You don't need to fully cover the whole entire panel. And I'll show you that in just a moment. Now, once we go ahead and etch, we'll let this dry for about maybe 15 minutes, and then we're gonna prime. 
Now our primer is going to be different from what we used in part one. In part one, we used a gray primer, a high surfacer primer, really thick to really, really help out with our uh, fiberglass panels to smooth them out. On this particular car, on these metal panels, we don't have that much thick body filler. We don't have much going on, so we're gonna actually use our regular primer. And the reason why I like it is because we can use the color that we need. Let me show you it. This primer is color build by Sickens. You might not be able to get this. You do not need to do it like this, but it's gonna help us. We can actually use the tint that we decide matches our base coat better. They're already pre-selected with a formula. So we found that this formula is gonna be the closest. Now the reason why we're using a color match primer is because I only want red on this car. I don't want gray to go a little bit further in the jams. Even though we have everything masked off, I wanna keep it red. And this primer is enough to get enough build and enough mills that we need. So when we go to sand it, we'll be ready for our sealer and then ready for our paint. So let's go ahead Let's get our etch on and let's get our primer rolling. So just like that, we have a beautiful, nice, smooth primer finish. And it's all because we took our time to refine our scratch from 180, 220, and 320. And now a nice new body is ready to be sanded and ready for paint. Every step matters, so it's very important that we take our time. I hope you guys learned something, and I know I can't wait to learn from everyone in the comment sections. So if you saw something in the video today that you think I would benefit from, and other people can benefit from, let me know. Leave a comment so we can have that discussion. From here, we're gonna start to work on our trunk. We gotta patch up some holes that were poorly filled with just Bondo, and then we're gonna move it along to the front end and going on to paint. So, this is Brian from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it, it's just paint. Let's check out that primer. <music> 